I'm already fired up. I'm going right into the Word of God. Go with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. Chapter 4 of the Gospel of Matthew. God laid a thought on my heart as I was going through some of the struggles at the end of the year. And you're going to be a recipient of what I know the Holy Ghost told me to say to you this morning. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written, again thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give you if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, get behind me. For it is written, thou shalt worship thy God and him only shall thy serve, shall thou serve. I'm going to speak from this thought today. Here's what the Lord said. It's a lie, it's a lie, and I know it. One more time. It's a lie, say that with me. It's a lie, and I know it. One of the craziest things to me is how People can take a lie and turn it into the truth, even though the lie does not make much sense and people will believe it. One of the case in point, and this is not a political statement, but this is just a fact that I can use to let you understand where I'm coming from. A case in point is our outgoing president, Donald Trump who has continued to lie about widespread voter fraud in this election with no proof. Matter of fact, the voter fraud cases has gone to 16 course courts and the United States Supreme Court and been kicked out of all of them because there was no proof. Here's the kicker. His followers, there's still people that believe him, they're ready to fight to keep him in office and they still don't have any proof. See, the problem is, when you believe a lie, two things happen in your life. The first thing that happens in your life when you believe a lie is it throws your life off course. Uh, it makes you miss your destiny. The second thing that happens when you believe a lie is that it sends your life in the wrong direction. The craziest thing is people get used to the lie, desensitized by the lie, and the lie seems to drive their life. 
Let me tell you how we get used to life. Can I prove it to you? One of the strangest uh, parts of our grammar is the oxymoronic statement. Now think about that. Oxymoronic statement or the contrary statement means it's a statement that's contradictory because it doesn't make sense because it contradicts itself. And yet we all believe the statement once we hear it because we've gotten used to it. We live our life by it. Let me give you some examples of an oxymoronic statement. The first one is we had jumbo shrimp. That's right. I think that just caught up with you. Not only that, the salesman gave me an exact estimate. There was a deafening silence. None of that makes sense. She had a very sad smile. She was wearing a genuine imitation. These are all oxymoronic statements that we've all got used to saying. They don't really make any sense. Matter of fact, they're openly deceptive. See, I just used one right there. Openly deceptive. So you understand that we can all still get used to these crazy statements and substitute them for truth. And it reminds me of when me and my wife were going up to a campus, to my seminary, after I had been there in a few years, and she told me, put the GPS in. And I did not turn on GPS because I looked at her and I said, girl, I know where I'm going. Oh, you ever did that? How we tell our wives we know where we're going? I said, I know where I'm going. And as we were going, I got lost and I got losser, if that's a word. And pretty soon after we ran straight into a construction site, I turned the GPS on. But when I turned it on, it was too late because we ran right into the construction site where it said, turn left. But because of the construction, there was no left. So here I was. I'm transitioning. I was powerless because my lie had thrown me off course, made me miss my goal. I want to expose the first Sunday in this year, one of the biggest weapons that the devil frequently uses against us to steal our strength, to steal our joy, to steal our very destiny, to take away from us the blessings that God has for us. The devil comes along and uses this weapon and we find ourselves walking around frightened, weakened, and defeated. What is that weapon? Lies. I know it sounds funny. But we fall for the devil's lies. I mean, we know the lie is not the truth because we know the word of God. But that lie starts driving our life and we forget about the word of God. Do you know the devil gets inside our heads and makes you think some things that you know aren't true? I just touched somebody right there. You're walking around now frightened, scared, fear is coming. All these things have happened and you know in the word of God is an answer that contradicts his lie, but you're falling for the lie. You got to make sure you do not do that. Here's what I need you to know. No matter what the devil says, because he tries to make us think uh, it's, it's not going to work. It's all over. Nobody has ever gotten out of that. I don't know how you're going to make it through this. You're getting ready to die. He tells you all kinds of things that don't come true. Please listen to me. And the fact of the matter is God's word tells us, no matter what the devil says to us, we are overcomers. 1 John 5 and 4. That which is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Did you hear the word of God? God said, I'm an overcomer. No matter what the enemy says, I will overcome. Not only am I an overcomer, no matter what the devil says, we are more than. Somebody ought to hear more than. We are more than conquerors. I like when God says more than because it means that nothing that comes at us can stop us. We are more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37. Yay! We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Do you realize that we are more than conquerors? We are overcomers. Not only that, God's word never fails. God's word never fails. Isaiah 55 verses 11 and 12. Follow me. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, 
It shall prosper in the thing that I send it to. And not only will it prosper, but they will grow thereby. Here's what God is saying. You're a conqueror. You're an overcomer. His word never fails. And then God never fails. Joshua 1 and 5. God told Joshua, um, all the days of your life, no man shall be able to stand before you. Just like I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will never fail you. Did you hear what I said? Why do we fall for the devil's lies when God has shown us to the contrary that we are more than conquerors through him? We are overcomers. What I'm telling you is in 2021, you ought to stand up just like I do. Quit letting the devil lead you around with the lies and tell him, I understand who I am. I understand what my God has done. I understand that I'm more than a conqueror. I will not allow you to do this to my life. You ought to tell him it's a lie next time he brings something to your head. It's a lie. You know, the battlefield is in our mind. The enemy comes in our mind with all kinds of things that we take in and process when we should not tell him it's a lie. It's a lie. And I know it. You ought to stand on the word of God because I need you to know the devil comes after believers. That's right. He's not looking to come after other folks. He's attacking you and me because we have something he wants. We have God's blessing that he never had. He's craving to have us serve and worship him instead of worshiping God. And we have something that he's trying to steal from us. Don't you dare give it up because the devil runs around deceiving and lying. He's just like this little dog. I remember I had changed my running course, my walking course. And I would, when I, whenever I go to a new course, I look around to make sure there are no dogs loose. This is unfamiliar territory. So as I'm going on this course, I looked over in a yard and I saw this great Dane, a big Dog. So I started walking lightly to make sure that I did not disturb him. All of a sudden, I got spooked. I heard this barking behind me, and I took off running. When I took off running, I heard this barking. I didn't know what was going on, but I heard the owner saying, Stop! Slow down! Come back here! Get back here! Then the owner started talking to me. It was weird. The owner said, Stop running! I'm thinking to myself, stop running. When I turned around, y'all, you will not believe what I saw. I saw this one of the little teeny dogs with the whiskers chasing me. And when I stopped, watch me, he stopped. And he stood there barking. And, I'm, and, I'm, and he just stopped. And the owner got close enough to pick him up and said to me, as he was barking in her arms, said, look, I was trying to stop you. He was... You were running, and he loves when people run because it makes him think they're scared of him with his little self. So he runs, and when you run, you were just playing all into him. That's why he was chasing you. You saw when, he, when you stopped, he stopped. He's really nothing but a lot of bark. I hope somebody just caught that, and I don't have to preach it again. That's what the devil does. He's got you on the run. There's something going on in your life right now. He's standing behind you barking, making a lot of noise, making you think he's going to do something. But I dare you to stop. If you stop, the devil's going to stop. And when you stop and start putting the word of God on him, he doesn't know what else to do because he understands that you are stronger than he is. But the devil loves when you're afraid of him because he knows you have the power. He knows that men and women of God are stronger. Somebody looking at me right now, you may be crying about something. Watch me. That's a lie. You have allowed something to steal your heart. That is a lie. All I'm saying to you is in 2021, you ought to say it's a lie. It's a lie. And I know it. when he comes after church. Well, listen to Jesus. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, there were the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious people that were standing there. And in this Gospel, Jesus went up and he, he began to talk. You ever notice how it was the religious people trying to stop Jesus who were motivated by Satan because they did not want truth to come out? 
So these religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees, in that 8th chapter of John, they began to talk to Jesus, and Jesus said unto them, uh, you know, how, who he was and what he came to do. And they, said, and they started talking against him. And all of a sudden, in that 43rd verse, they said, and God is our father. Jesus said, no, 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 no. If God was your father, you would love me. Then he said in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. He is a murderer from the beginning. There is no truth in him. He is the father of lies. He said, just as God is made up of truth, the devil is made up of lies. There's no truth in the devil. So here we are walking around allowing a weak devil to come after us with lies and you notice when the devil comes after us it's not really the devil coming after us it's the lie that we have caught on to it's a little spirit because the devil is not omnipresent so he can't come and be like God he got you so freaked out he got you thinking he's just as strong as God when the greater one lives on the inside of you you got to understand who we are in God so you can get blessed 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 14 said, he comes as an angel of light. When he comes as an angel of light, it means he comes to deceive us because just like he came to Eve in the Garden of Eden, think back to the conversation the devil had with Eve as he lied to her. All dressed up in light as the serpent, he looked at Eve and so he goes to us. He whispers stuff in our ear. He told Eve, you will not surely die. And Eve fell for the lie. And because of that, all of us are now fallen creatures. Understand something. The only reason the devil can keep coming at us with a lie is because he appeals to our fallen nature. Don't make me have to read you out there. We all are liars. Lying is a part of us. If there's a saint out there watching me and you can lift your hand and say you ain't never told a lie, you're lying right now. Because lies, big, juicy lies, they fill us, our nature, they breathe as a part of us. A lie just sounds good. It makes me look good. It dresses stuff up. So before we know it, we've told a lie, and that's how the devil gets his hooks. And I'm going to Jesus now. You thought I forgot about my text. I did not. In this text called the temptation of Christ, you will find out, you might not have ever noticed this, what he tempted Jesus with were lies. Sounded like the truth. Felt like the truth. Jesus was in a weakened state where the devil knew the lie would work. Is that why the devil knows the lie will work on you? Because so long he's been chasing you and so long you've fallen for it. And that's where you are. But Jesus is going to show us that we need to stand up and say it's a lie. And I know it. Are you interested? You want to know how our Savior defeated the devil? And how he stood up. Because Jesus was the only one who did it. The devil lied. Everybody else from Adam down till Jesus was born. Every patriarch fell for the lies and deceptions of the devil. Except Jesus. This is one of the most interesting passages there is. Jesus said, I know it's a lie, first of all, because God is my source. God is my source. I know it's a lie. Because God's been keeping me. I'm still here. I know it's a lie. Because my worship is working. Let's talk about it. In this Gospel of Matthew. We have seen. Coming from Christmas. The birth. Of Jesus Christ. The birth of John the Baptist. Then the birth of the ministry of John the Baptist. And after the birth of the ministry of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, we've just seen at the end of this third chapter, as we go into this fourth chapter, where Jesus Christ, when John was baptizing him, the Father came down from heaven and confirmed, this is my beloved son. I don't have time to stop there, but know you're a child of God as we go into this text. That's why you shouldn't let the devil lie to you and steal your life. He said, this is my beloved son. And then something strange happens. As soon as as he gets anointed, he's sent to the wilderness, driven, the gospel of Mark says, driven to the wilderness by the Spirit of the Lord. 
Oh, I got to unpack that. You got to understand the spirit of the Lord drove Jesus. Are you saying, Pastor, the spirit of the Lord drove me to the wilderness? I'm telling you to watch out because these three lies, these temptations that the devil used, they're the same ones he used in the Garden of Eden, and there's the ones he used on Jesus, and they're the ones he used in our life. He used heathenism, he used materialism, and he used egotism. He made sure he appealed. John, the revelator, says it best in first, in the first John. He says, the, pro, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All those are the same thing. Heathenism, lust of your flesh. Egotism, building you up, tempting God. And materialism, wealth. The devil always comes at you. His lie is not dressed in something you don't like. It's dressed in something that you invited into your heart. And that's how you fall. So the Bible tells us Jesus was driven to the wilderness by God. And what's funny about Jesus being driven to the wilderness by God, I'm just trying to find something I wanted to show you. As he's driven to the wilderness by God, the first verse says, he was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit of God, the wilderness. I'm going to help somebody. The wilderness always means a desolate place. You can be in a room full of people and be in the wilderness. Because the wilderness is where the devil's lie has dragged you into it, and now you're by yourself. But the devil doesn't know he's playing right into God's hand. Because before we can be what God wants us to be, we have to have a wilderness moment. We have to have a wilderness where we're somewhere all by ourselves, where God confirms our ministry. We have to have something that says I belong to God. It's where God calls me, and then he takes me to a wilderness, something I don't understand, right after my baptism, right after I get blessed, and he sends me to a place of desolation. I'm wondering what's going on. And Jesus was driven to that desolate place, because in that, I call it a breaking moment. God has to break you from you, break you from other people who hold you, because the new you can't go where the old, the old you can't go where the new you needs to go. So God take you to a place where all you have is him. You know what? He puts you in a, a wilderness that's so deep, you're not going to get out until you stop believing the lies of Satan. The wilderness moment. Jesus had to have his. You have yours and I have mine. Think of David sitting around by the campfire watching sheep, hearing the calling of God by the prophet going into the kingdom, slaying Goliath, then finding himself running around, being chased by Saul. No country, sleeping, living with the Philistines. Don't know what's going on. God, you said I was the anointed king. Why is this happening to me? That's that moment when God has to deal with us and make us say, you got nobody but him. You got nobody but me. David was driven, and then the worst happened. He got his mighty men when he came back, their wives and the place they were living was burned down. I can see David throwing up his hands saying, God, what else do you want from me? And all of a sudden, the Bible said David was led into his moment. He said, David encouraged. He should have fallen apart, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. It's Moses on the backside of a mountain a murderer, a used-to-be prince, sitting there wondering how his life at 80 years old had nothing happened, got to this point. But then he decides to turn aside. I need to tell you, even though you may want to leave God, he's not going to leave you alone if his hands are on you. And here he is, Moses. He turns aside. God says, here's your moment. Take off your shoes. Holy ground. When he takes off his shoes, God looks at him and said, you're going to be my deliverer. He said, I stutter. God said, I don't care if you stutter. Go and fulfill your destiny. And Moses had to come down the mountain, change. It's Jacob, tricky Jacob. Jacob who deceived his brother Esau, who tricked his uncle, who stole, who lied, found himself on the backside of a desert wrestling with a man all night long. I love God because the only reason some of us have made it, God grabbed us and wrestled us. Jacob got to his moment. It got so bad that God had to pull his hip out of place and he got a limp. And when he started limping, God looked at him and said, what are you going to do? Let me go. 
And Jacob said, here's how you know you got your mom. I'm not letting you go till you bless me. You know what happens to us? We get to the point that no matter how bad life gets because we've had that moment, we say we're not letting go till you bless me. Or you can see the Apostle Paul, his name was Saul, riding around killing Christians, saying he was serving God, getting knocked off his horse, blinded. And God said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And God said, who are you? Pope Saul said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, you going to know me. And he left there no longer Saul, but Apostle Paul. See, some of you are running from the very breaking moment that makes you like God. I had my, so you have many of these moments in your life. Many of you sitting there know there's not just one breaking moment. Some are used for sanctification, but there's that one moment when God tells you, this is who you are. You're not going anywhere else. I had mine. I'll never forget that I was going to the hospital because I had just gotten licensed to preach. Man, I was on fire. I knew I was somebody. Everybody was telling me that was hot stuff. And I'm preaching and I'm walking around with the scriptures not knowing I hadn't been broken yet. And I remember this woman had a, a husband who had contracted HIV. We didn't know what HIV was back then. She had HIV and AIDS and not so don't worry. I remember going to the house praying. I said, my husband, I told him you're coming to the hospital to see him. I said, don't worry. I'm bringing my anointing up there. I'm going to see him. And I, we're going to go and take care of this. Don't you cry no more, honey. I'm going to lay hands on him. I'm ashamed to tell you. I went to the hospital. And I remember the closer I got to the AIDS ward, <laughs> the, the more frightened I got. And then when I got there, because I wasn't used to this, they told you, you got to put on this, you got to wear a mask over your face and put this on. Don't let no blood, don't let any blood get on you. And I panicked. When the nurse left, I left. I remember going down fast as I could to get in my car. All this anointing I was supposed to have, I jumped in my car and I was getting ready to leave. It was the old Newcomb Hospital in Bonds, no longer there. I was getting ready to pull out and God told me, stop. Go back. And pray. Scared to death. I remember going out the driveway, turned around several times before I got back in. I got out of my car. I said, okay, God, go with me. And I walked into that hospital. Just as I got to the top of the stairs, the nurse said, oh, we were looking for you. He said, he knew you were coming, so he's waiting on your prayer. And I remember changing into all that gear. Praying, reading, staying longer than I wanted to stay. The fear of leaving. And I remember when I got back, I went back out to my car and I sat in the driveway and cried. I cried because God said these words to me. This is who you are. You can't run from this. And I thanked him for being a faithful God. You're going to have a moment of wilderness. You're going to have several where you got to own up. Figure out who you are. You can't keep running backwards. Forward. You got to make up your mind not to let the lie drive you. Jesus was driven to the wilderness, said to be tempted of the devil. That's almost a strange thing the text says. Tempted of Satan. The Bible tells me in James that God tempts nobody with evil. So if God doesn't tempt anybody with evil, and not only that, the Lord's prayer says, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. It, it, is the Bible wrong? Is God confused? What happened? You need to understand something. There are two words in this text for tempt. The first word for tempt means an accusation or a destruction. So when the devil's trying to tempt us, it's to accuse us or to destroy us. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, if you look at the context of that verse, it says, and lead us not into temptation. Watch the next verse. And deliver us from evil. So it's saying that God keeps us away from the temptations that are destructive and evil. But then there's a temptation that leads us into a place of testing. It's easy to say you love God. It's harder to act that you love God in a moment of crisis. So what God does for our own sake, he brings us to a place where he tests us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm going to tell you, I failed some tests. You, you failed some? I failed some tests before. And as God tested Jesus, can you see him? 40 days and 40 nights, he slept, he was hungry. That's when the enemy comes, when you're at your weakest. That's how the devil works. And he's a good deceiver. 
Revelation tells us he was able to take one third of the angels with him, cast them down to hell. That's where he gets his demonic army. And as Jesus was there, tempted of Satan, he was being tested so he could learn how to act in suffering. Let me give you what I'm talking about. The first thing that happens when you're being tested by God is you ought to rejoice. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that should try you. Fiery, don't miss that. That's as though some strange thing happened to you. It's not strange. That's the enemy coming against you. But rejoice inasmuch as you'll be partaker of his glory. When his glory is revealed, you shall come forth with exceeding joy. What I'm saying, if you're going through a testing now, it's for your rejoicing in your suffering. There's some of us out there who learn to rejoice in suffering. Not only that, you ought to also know that testing is so I learn I'm going to always get out. First Corinthians 10, 13 says there's no temptation taking you. No temptation taking you, but such is common to man. God is faithful. He will make a way of escape and not let you be tempted above that you're able. That's why the devil can't lie to me. It's a lie because I know even what I'm in now, I'm getting out of it. Somebody ought to shout with me right there. You're coming out, my brother. You're coming out. Tell the devil I'm coming out because God said so. And the third reason is, the best one, Hebrews 4.15 says, we don't have a high priest who can't be compassion, who doesn't feel compassion for us. I'm glad God feels sorry for us sometimes because it is God's compassion. It says he's been tempted in all points like us, but the caveat is without sin. What that verse is saying is Jesus made a way so that the temptation doesn't hurt us. Look what the devil said first. If thou be, first temptation, you are, the, you are the, if thou be the son of God, turn this stones into bread. First, you got to follow out. Look what the devil does. He does to everybody. You ready to hear me? First thing he does is use doubt. He said, if you are. The devil loves to try to make us doubt God. After all God has done for us, the lie is he uses the doubt. So he, he challenges us. He said, if you're the son of God. And in his first temptation, he used doubt in two ways. Here's what he does to us. He told Jesus, with your hungry self, this the heathenism, you ought to satisfy your flesh. He said, first of all, if you really are the son of God and you have power, you should be able to do something to get out of this. I don't think you really have any power with God. That's how the devil gets us down. He said, I don't think you have any power. That's why you're always in a situation where you're losing. Then the second doubt he throws in, and if God had power, he wouldn't have you here hungry. You know what the devil does? Make us say, the devil comes, why God let you go through this? And you start following the lie. Lord, why am I going through this? You start saying and repeating the lie that the devil said to you. And all of a sudden, but Jesus did not fall for the devil's lies. Jesus was able to answer the devil. You know what he said? He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Follow this with me, guys. Here's what Jesus said. He said, God is my source. The reason I don't worry, it's that simple. It's a lie. I know it's a lie. Because God is my source. I've tried other sources. There's no other source like God. God has been my source. So devil, you can lie to me all you want. I know I can sit here and run off stuff and name it, but you can name them fast as I did. The only one who's ever treated me like this, the only one who's ever helped me like this has been my relationship with God. You can trust you and you're going to fail you. You can trust friends, they're going to turn their back on you and walk out. You can trust your intelligence, your intelligence is going to fail. You can trust your money, your money can't help you when you get in a real situation in life. The only person you can trust and really know it's true is God. Little Billy was riding home from Sunday school with his parents in the car from church. And he said something strange. He started talking. He said his, his older brother was in the car also. He said, uh, I feel sorry for that Goliath that we talked about in Sunday school today. I know he was a bully, but I feel sorry for him. And his mom, his dad was driving. So his mom turned around and said, Billy, what are you talking about? He said, well, we learned about Goliath. He said, from what I can remember, he got just what he deserved. 
And his brother said, boy, you crazy. Goliath was a bully and he was pushing everybody around. David was a little boy. He, he got just what he deserved. And then Billy said, I know, but it just wasn't fair that he was fighting two people. And his mom said, two people? David was out there alone against Goliath. Billy, you got this wrong. Don't you remember? It was David with his slingshot. He said, oh, well, what? Well, he wasn't alone. God was with him. And the bad thing is, because God was there, it really wasn't a fair fight. And so Goliath never stood a chance because when God was on David's side, the fight was no longer winnable for Goliath. How come Billy understands something that we don't understand? When God's on your side, it ain't even a fair fight. Whatever the devil's telling you, it's not even a fair fight. If you don't fall for the lie, you'll be able to stand. The second temptation. Watch this. The devil then picked up his game. The Bible said the devil took him to a high place on the temple. Now watch this. It messed me up when I saw that. The devil stepped up his game. So all I want you to know is even though you're anointed, sometimes the devil can drag you around. You got to learn how to hold on. I want to set up a good example here. If the devil could take Jesus in his weakened state and take him to the top of a mountain, Jesus cooperated. Of course, all I'm saying is don't act like there's not going to be days you're going to have to stand. You will go into the fire. You will get sick. You will almost lose your house. You will have some problems in your marriage. You will have some problems in your mind. That's just the devil dragging you. But Jesus never relented, even though the devil dragged him in his weakened state. Watch what the devil did. He stepped up his game. He brought doubt in. But this time the devil quoted scripture. He said, uh, if you be the son of God, they could have doubt again. Throw yourself down off this temple because it's written in his word, Psalm 91, that if you dash your foot against a stone, he'll pick you up. I want you to know the devil knows scripture. But he takes it and uses it in a way that will destroy us. If you ever find yourself using a scripture that goes against the word of God, that means you're just not using the word properly. God is not wrong. I remember I walked up to somebody, they were, they were best friends in the church, and I asked the brother, I said, hey, where's so-and-so, man? I haven't seen you guys together in a while. He said, man, I stopped hanging with him. He phoned me. Two-faced it. You know what the Bible said, don't you? I said, no. What does the Bible say? He said, the Bible said, wipe the dust off your feet. The Bible said, don't cast your pearl before swine. Mm, I said, that's not the right way to use that scripture. I said, what the Bible, okay, I, I, okay, okay, how about this then? Tell me what it means when God says, forgive your brother seven times 70 in one day. Well, but, but that's a different, no, 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 tell me, no. All scripture got to harmonize with the heart of God. So when you use a scripture out of context, it means either the devil's motivating you to do it, or you're just taking it out of context for your own view. All I'm trying to tell you is the devil can still use you as a Christian when he gives you a scripture that makes you go against God. There's a church in the Appalachians called the Snake Handlers Church. You look it up, 2014, the church pastor, because what he would do in the service to show off, he would actually pick up snakes. And they had to go through snakes. And the church was known as a snake. They took, Ma they took Mark 16 where it said we drink any deadly poison. We can handle snakes and they won't hurt us. Here's what happened. He got bit during one of his sermons. And he said, don't worry. I would say we get bit. Yeah, it won't hurt us. He stayed in the church so long till he died by the time they took him with an ambulance. Some things are foolishness and not faith. That's taking scripture. That's tempting God. Because what Jesus said in his response. Remember, all of Jesus' responses came from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Here's what he said. It is written, again, he used a scripture, but Jesus used the right word. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All Jesus said is, I don't, here's what he said. I don't have to believe that lie because not only is God my source, watch this, the second reason is, God's been keeping me. You tell a lie because I can remember the nights God brought me through. Matter of fact, I can think of some days when I shouldn't have made it and I made it. Anybody with me? I can think of some times when I should have been out of here, but the Lord brought me back anyway. As a matter of fact, don't make me get started. I don't need to tempt God. I got enough proof already inside of me who my Savior is. It's a lie, Jesus said. The devil got upset. I'm closing. And he took Jesus and he took him to a high mountain. And there, he showed him all the world. I got to stop. Not only does the devil drag us around, 
Here is where the real battlefield is. I don't know how the devil showed Jesus the world, but I do know this. Jesus saw it. He got in Jesus' mind. The place you got to worry about the devil getting with his lie is in your mind. He went from just telling him in the wilderness to dragging him. And then he said, now let me panoramically show you all you can have. He said, I'll give you all these kingdoms if you will just worship me. The devil stepped up his game and lied. He said, fall down and worship me. Can I give you a hint? That's what the devil wants. You belong to God. This is so good. And he wants you. He's seen you lift your hands and worship God. He's seen you thank God ever since he was in heaven as Lucifer. He's been waiting on somebody to worship him. So he knows he didn't get Jesus to fall for the first two temptations. He said, I got him now. If I can get him to do this, I have him. What the devil wants you to do is give up. He wants you to cry. He wants you to sit there. Forget about the word. Believe the lie. And just sit there and cry. Well, 2021... Tell yourself, I am no longer falling for the lie. Somebody say this with me, it's a lie. I am going to get better. Can I tell you something? It's a lie. There is healing coming to you. It's a lie. Your money is going to change. It's a lie. Your family will be blessed. Somebody tell it with me, it's a lie. Why? Because the last thing Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only Shalt thou serve? He said, serve God and don't believe the lie. Worship. My worship is working. My worship is working. Can I tell somebody your worship is working? My worship is working. You know why your worship is working? Because you're still here. You know why your worship is working? Because when you cry out, there's a God powerful enough to answer. You know why your worship is working? Because he's a midnight hour God. You know why your worship is working? You don't need anybody else around. God will show up just for you. You know why your worship is working? Because he's with you and promised never to leave you. You ought to tell yourself, I want somebody free as we start this new year. This first Sunday in, in 2021, tell yourself, it's a lot. Every time the devil says something, it's a lot. And you know what? I know it. My Savior died so I wouldn't have to fall for these lies. And it's a lie, and I know it. So, what do you have to do? You have to do like Christ. There was a group of people watching, there was a group of people watching this man as he was a great acrobat. He took a wheelbarrow and wheeled it across a tightrope, one single rope. Then he came back. And he willed it again. And everybody went, ah, oh. Then his wife was standing there watching him as he gave his appeal. He looked over at her. He said, watch this. How many of you believe that I can walk across this tape rope with a wheelbarrow? We believe, we believe, yay. How many of you see me do it and know that I can make it over if you had to make a bet? We believe. He said, good. Since you believe me, how many of you will get in the barrel and let me wheel you over? All the hands went down, except one. His wife raised her hand. She got in the barrel. He wheeled her over. Follow me. And he explained, it's just like God. You say, God, I believe you. Yeah, I'm looking, I believe you. But you won't get in the battle. You know why you can't get delivered? You know why you never seen a miracle? Because there's some, you got to get in the barrel to be delivered. Somebody said, he only delivered her because that was his wife. No, that's the lie the devil tells you. He loves all of us equally. He will take just as good care of you. Our brothers and sisters, I'm appealing to you this year. It's a lie and I know it. If you're not saved, don't let the devil lie to you about salvation. That's the greatest lie. My life's a living hell. That's a lie. There is no life in hell. You got to accept him now. Let's pray. Say these words with me. Lord God, I believe you died 
for my sins. I receive you now. I am saved. Say this, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. If you believe that prayer, you just got saved. God forbid you walk out of here and get hit by a car. You're going to glory. This pastor told me, say, we got to have some excitement this year. But I just gave you a lot of ammo to start this year off with. It's a lie, devil. It's a lie. And I know it. God bless you. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down with a no way up. And I needed some help. Everybody. Breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free I tried it for myself and now I know What he did